Hello, I'm Dennis Stancic and welcome to episode six, part one of a two-part series on Betty 4. This laboratory device, again, was built a few years ago. Its uh, purpose is to demonstrate that we can fire this engine or cause it to rotate with very, very little input wattage, input power, what we call control voltage uh, here at Quantum Energy. Um, as always, these videos are not post-edited or professionally edited in any way. If there's a little misstep, I'm just going to continue on. Um, we have a clock here uh, with a second hand um, that you can see. We have an active meter on our alternator upstairs. And behind me is a reciprocating camera with also with a, a clock in view so that you can see the, uh, uh, the rear of the machine at all times during the, uh, during the videotaping. Uh, I'm going to quickly take you through uh, the parts of this particular engine. Same in, all, in all, almost all respects as any photon engine. Uh, here we have a 650 pound flywheel um, this time. It um, does have some science weights in here, right here that are lead shot. Uh, that allows us to change the moment of inertia for our experiments. This does rotate in both directions and it is magnetically levitated. There's the permanent magnets down below. So we have all the weight um, off the bearings. Uh, the attenuator here, which as you can see is uh, a permanent magnet and as well as the power ring here. And once again, we protect that geometry, uh, what the shape of that uh, magnet is, uh, what it field looked like, and the geography, how those um, how that magnetic force is laid out um, on, the, uh, uh, on the engine itself. Uh, those are things that are trade secrets and proprietary to, uh, to quantum, um, as well as inductance energy. The uh, uh, very simple premise of this is we have a flywheel on uh, one side. I'm going to take that out of neutral. As it comes around the point of entropy when it's taken out of neutral, I'm going to let it come up and park it again. You'll see that it stops. It's a discovery that we made here. It allows us to run two permanent magnets by each other and have one not affect the other. You can see that even though this is a, a fully charged permanent magnet, there's a space between them. It's not affecting the rotation um, of, the, uh, of the flywheel as it goes. If I take it out, um, as the point of entropy comes around, which is marked right here by this purple mark, you can see the engine fires and makes a rotation. Uh, if you don't understand point of entropy, Please go back, again, our nomenclature, uh, go back to the episode entitled Marie 4 and pick up and learn about that. And then uh, episode five, which is uh, Betty 3, the predecessor to um, this, laboratory, this laboratory engine. Um, so with that in mind, I'm gonna show you a few uh, things. How do we get power out of this? Um, again, this will spin in both directions. You can see the uh, alternator. It's designed to run at 28 volts because we're packing it into this very large 24 volt uh, capacitor bank here. It'll energize in uh, both directions. Um, it, the power is coming from an alternator on top. Right up here, I'll just show you that that's a standard axial turbine alternator with the coils in the center. Um, Permanent magnet, uh, permanent magnet alternator. Um, we do have this set up, you'll see in the next video, um, to test equipment so that you can look at the consumption. In other words, uh, we're gonna run this engine on, well, I got one right here, just a regular nine volt uh, uh, battery. I'm gonna pull this one out of here so you can see. It's an 850 milliamp hour. If you come on a tour here, you'll actually uh, take a battery like this that's confirmed that it is not charged. And uh, through the photonic system, you'll actually charge that while you're watching, participating in the other part of the tour. And in about 15 minutes or so, you'll be given custody of the charged battery that was uh, charged by environmental uh, photonic activity. And you'll come up here and actually run this engine uh, on your own. It's a, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And this system here, the Vernier system, tracks um, our uh, voltage and amperage. And we're gonna, you're gonna see that in action in, uh, in part two of this uh, video. So we'll go back to what we're trying to accomplish here. We've got a small flywheel on this side, uh, as you can see. I'm gonna slow this way down um, so that you can see it start. I'm gonna take it out of neutral, which is right there. And this has a uh, black uh, hash mark on it so you can see when it's rotating. It's gonna come around to the point of entropy which is coming up right now. Whoop, can't quite make it through. I slowed it down too much. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it farther out of neutral. 
let it come around. Let's see if it, if it activates. If not, I'll rotate it a little bit more. There we go. It goes through the point of entropy and accelerates. I'm going to bring it around, bring it around past neutral again. And here we go. It's coming up on the point of entropy. Each time it fires and I advance that, I'm going to get an acceleration out of this flywheel system, which is uh, down here, approximately 650 pounds. Power ring is about 50 pounds. Um, so we're a little over 700 pounds. And again, flywheels don't generate uh, or produce um, energy or electrical energy. What they do is store energy. So each time we come around, and the engine it has the ability to accelerate um, that flywheel system, um, uh, we are storing more energy, potential energy, that we can pull out of the system later. I'll do it a couple more times, just so you can see. Pull it out of neutral here. Bring it around. There we go again. And we'll do it one more time. There it comes. And we'll accelerate it there. So you can see that it'll find itself in neutral. I'm going to let it come back around and park, it, park itself. And there we go. And it doesn't matter how fast that's going. In other words, if I put mechanical energy, energy into it, um, Mother Nature can take over here. But I'm just going to take it out of neutral. And you can see it fire. And you can see it come around and park itself back in, uh, in its neutral position. So how are we going to get this to, uh, to fire and continue to rotate? And again, it doesn't matter what speed it is. You can see that we're producing about 28 volts. So we're about uh, at, its, uh, at its production output. So we're going to use a hunk of our magnetic material here. We call it magnetic fuel around here. Obviously, it doesn't look like this cube. I'm just going to show you that this is, in fact, a permanent magnet all the way around. It has a asymmetrical force in it, um, kind of like a Hallbach array, but ours is uh, uh, manufactured in, in, uh, in one step, one extrusion step. Uh, if you're very careful and you listen to this, okay, that's one side, okay, and this is the other side. One more. Whoops. As I told you, we're going to keep we're going to keep videoing. So there you go, and on this side, and if you come on a tour, you'll really be able to feel the differential here. So what is this going to do? Well, without putting any energy in the system, and it doesn't matter how slow this is going, I can use the benefit of these small, uh, inexpensive magnets over here. These are just off-the-shelf uh, magnets. I'm going to let that rotate around let it park itself. And again, if I have the paired permanent magnetic field properly aligned, which is what this mark is, even though it's parked, I'll park that up there without putting any energy into the system, we're going we're gonna to get firings. And here it comes. going to come back around. That little bit of force is helping it. I'll speed it up just so that you can see that it's consistent. Now, what happens if I, ha I don't have that aligned? In other words, that paired permanent magnetic field is not aligned. Well, we can jumble this up, and we'll just go at random here and park it up there. And you can see nothing happens. Doesn't matter if I speed it up, nothing's going to happen. That paired permanent magnetic field is not aligned, and it will not help operate the engine. Again, no energy in the magnet. Uh, we haven't discovered. Uh, we don't really understand magnetism all that well yet, but magnetism has an inherent force, as you've all experienced, by playing with magnets and the push and pull of a magnet. If I turn this around and I line up the paired permanent magnetic field, it comes around the point of entropy, it's going to rotate. And it'll operate that like that flawlessly. Now, will it continue to spin and accelerate? No, it will not, because I'm not controlling the attenuation, the weakening of the field. I have to have a small computer, and in the next video, you're going to see this little tiny servo operate this large engine. It's just got a little quarter-inch drive on there. And like I say, we're going to operate that with, a, with just a 9-volt battery uh, under load. Um, that alternator is putting out energy to this um, to this capacitor bank, which obviously can be used. So as you can see, I'm not controlling it. If I controlled it, if I took it out of neutral, then I'm going to speed up. We're at you know, 12 volts or so. 
I'll just speed this up. I'm at 16, 18 volts. I'm going to let it fire by itself. All I have to do is adjust it that far. Now I'm at 21, 22 volts. Those with the, with the ability can zoom in on that. I'm at 24, 25 volts. I do it again. I'm at 25, 26 volts. We'll do it one more time. See if we can get up. There's 27 volts. Come back up. There we go, hitting 28. If I pull it away, it's going to park itself. So very, very small input of control voltage, a little bit of added extra energy that can adjust this attenuation, just a small amount. And we're going to get an acceleration while we're under load constantly from that, uh, from that alternator. So stand by for part two. I think you're going to find it very interesting. We actually run this engine with a nine volt battery. And again, Everything that you see here on tour, if you uh, come here on a tour to the Scottsdale Laboratories, um, you, these, these are wide open. You're going to be able to walk around them, see how they operate, actually operate them uh, yourself. So you can bring a meter with you. We supervise everything because we don't want anybody to get uh, injured. We have a really great, great uh, safety track record um, here. But I uh, uh, hope you found this fascinating. Look forward to seeing you in uh, part two.